Hi, I'm Chin Liu. And I'm Sal, and this is our next make. This week's project didn't turn out the way we expected, but we still learned an important lesson, so we thought we'd share it with you. This is how the episode was supposed to start. This week, we're taking a road trip to go visit my brother to help him with a really exciting project. Yes, he wants to convert his shed into a backyard office. All right, we're here at my brother's place. We're going to take this shed and relocate it and make it even bigger. So right now, what we're doing is we're setting up to establish the footers of the new location. Uh, we've laid out some pavers in rough locations, and now we're going through and leveling each spot individually. The goal here is to transform an existing 8x8 shed into an 8x10 office with additional storage on the side. Before starting on the project, Sal's brother Michael texted us a few photos of the shed and I started sketching out different roof options. I added all of this information to our private wiki we created for this project so Sal and I could keep track of our progress. Then Michael sent us this post-it sketch and said, can we do this? So I jumped right into SolidWorks to start figuring things out. Before investing too much time into the design, I modeled very basic geometry so my brother could get a sense of what he imagined. His request was to build a large deck under the existing shed, to add a two-foot bump out on the shed to make the office bigger, and then build a shed and covered deck off of the side of the office. Instead of continuing to send texts and pictures to each other on our phones, I shifted our collaboration to a conversation in the Made in 3D Swim community. My brother simply created a free account on the 3D Experience platform, and then we used a private conversation to share notes, images, and 3D models. It was awesome that he could view the model in 3D and give me the go-ahead to figure out the details. One large element of the design was a new deck. We built it in two sections, starting by screwing a pressure-treated 2x4 to the bottom of the 2x6 rim joist. This will act as a sill plate that rests on the footers and supports the floor joists. At the back of the deck, where the storage area will be, we turned the joists 90 degrees and hung them on joist hangers. In our haste to get things done before we lost daylight, and because we started to hear that the tiny forecast of rain was threatening to become worse, we forgot to install the hangers before mounting the joists. That just meant we had the slightly more fiddly job of hanging them in place. Once framing was done, we covered the deck with pressure-treated plywood. This gave us a nice flat surface to work on to build the second deck. We built it upside down so we could cover the bottom with plywood. Then, with the help of Sal's other brother and the three of our nephews, we flipped it over so we could fill it with rigid insulation. These five and a half inches of foam will help the office stay warm in the cooler months. At this point, everything was going according to plan. We had bought and used up all of our pressure treated material. That's because we took the time up front to work out the design in SolidWorks. I didn't need to model everything, just enough to let SolidWorks produce the automatic cut list my brother could use to order what we needed. Using SOLIDWORKS weldments functionality for projects made from dimensional lumber is a great way to figure out exactly how much material you need to buy. And sharing this information in a swim conversation along with 3D models and 2D drawings is a great way to make sure everyone's on the same page. So we've been working through rain, it's been hard to film, but we finally got the deck built. We're getting ready to actually move the shed up onto this platform, so it's gonna be a big moment. Before we could lift the shed up onto the new deck, we had to remove the existing floor. We first cut out the large center section and then worked our way around the outside to remove the rim joists and remaining flooring. This was a bit challenging because we had to support the shed on three sides while we worked on the fourth side. We danced with cinder blocks quite a bit that morning, including when we were finally ready to raise the shed up 16 inches so it would be in line with the new deck. Guess what? Sheds are heavy. We use long crowbars and digging bars to slowly lever up each corner and shim it with cinder blocks and 4x4s. When it was close enough, the six of us muscled it up onto the deck and then coaxed it into its exact position. This was a huge milestone, but we were still just getting started. We quickly built the small side wall of the new storage area and the header that would carry the roof rafters. It was right about this time when the rain really started to come down, and I managed to roll my ankle. This put me out of commission for the rest of the day, and the downpour made it really hard to get more footage. So we can't show you how the second beam went in, how the rafters were installed, how the roof deck was secured, or how the gussets that hold the rafters to the existing roof structure were attached. We'll have to cover that and more in a future project. Because sometimes things don't go according to plan. Sometimes the weather and injuries get in the way. But we've got to put ourselves out there anyway and do our best, because that's when magical things can happen. For me, it was this moment. Let me be the first to point out that this is the longest we've ever spent together. Yeah. Since we were like, I just spent the longest stretch of time with my brothers that I had since I was a child. It was a true gift and a reminder that I need to make time to do more of that in the future. I just love that your brothers got to see you in your element and that you got to teach them and me some things we didn't know. 
Yeah, we shared a lot of knowledge that weekend, and that's inspired us to do more with this channel. When we started, we simply wanted to inspire and entertain you, but we realize now we also need to focus on teaching. When we worked with our nephews over the weekend, it became evident that we need to teach the younger generation what we know, because we all have important information that we can share. And if you get an opportunity to just teach one person something you know, I'm sure you'll feel great about it, and the person you got to teach would be very grateful for it. That's why, in addition to our weekly projects, we're also going to create dedicated videos that teach what we know. Be sure to check out the first episode that focuses on the circular saw, and there'll be more episodes to follow. Until then, we'll see you on our next week.